Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mac Whisperer Academy. My name is Dylan Stewart. They call me the Mac Whisperer. And if you're an Apple Music subscriber or thinking about becoming one but wondering if it's worth the money, then this video is just for you. Let's hop on in and get started. As a kid, growing up in the 70s, I was surrounded by music and I just ate it up. It was an era when pop culture and pop music collided. I mean, KISS was simultaneously a rock band and a Marvel comic book. Think about that for a second. The band Journey was so popular, they got their own arcade video game. And the weird part was that it was kind of fun. You see, I surrounded myself with music. In fact, I still remember the first record album, yeah, I did say record album, that I ever purchased with my own money. Pac-Man Fever. I know, not only am I totally dating myself, I'm embarrassing myself at the exact same time, but I'm trying to make a point. When I say I love music, I want you to understand it's not just something I say. I love music. But when the music industry took another turn, and became subscription-based? With services like Pandora and Spotify and ultimately Apple Music, I was really hesitant. I wanted to own my own music, not lease it perpetually. But then the realization hit me. For the price of one album a month, I could listen to every song in the universe. Not at the same time, of course, but it meant that if I went to a movie and heard a new song, I can immediately download every song that artist had ever recorded. I mean, for someone who loves music like I do and loves to explore and find new artists and new albums, Apple Music has become a godsend. So in this video, I want to simplify things. I want to show you how to really use Apple Music and how to get the most out of it. So let's hop on over to the computer and open up the music app. And let me give you a quick walkthrough. Here it is right here on the dock. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. The first thing I want you to look at is the sidebar on the left. Under the section that says Apple Music, you should see three listings. The first one is called Listen Now. Listen Now gives you suggestions based on your listening history. It'll help you find playlists and artists and albums and all sorts of cool stuff that you didn't know you hadn't heard. And then there's the Browse section. Browse is where you go to find new music to listen to. You see, Apple promotes a lot of artists and albums from here, but in addition to that, if you scroll down, you're going to find all sorts of playlists and other options. And then there's the radio section. The radio section can be a little confusing and overwhelming. It's simultaneously a place to hear live radio, like terrestrial radio stations, internet feeds of famous stations. And on top of that, it's also a place where you can create your own customized station, kind of like what you do with Pandora, based on a specific artist, album, or song. We'll talk a lot more about that in just a moment, but for right now, let's hop over to the Listen Now section and take a look around. You see, the Listen Now section changes on a regular basis, depending on what you're listening to at that particular time. It will suggest playlists, albums, and artists will also give you easy access to any of your recently played playlists. As you scroll through it, you'll find other stuff like customized made for you playlists. They've got a bunch of them separated into different sections. For example, here we've got the get up playlist, which shows upbeat music, maybe music you'd like to clean the house to or work out to. See a whole bunch of stuff in there for me. And then you've got the chill mix. This is a playlist intended for a little more of a calmer ambiance. Maybe you're making dinner or hanging out or just chilling. And then there's the new music mix, which is constantly changing every week with new artists suggested to you based on what you're listening to. I have found so many great songs and albums and artists by listening to this. It's updated every Friday and you can just listen to it. If you don't like it, skip forward. The system will understand that when you skip forward, you didn't like that, and it won't recommend that as often. You can also come into this section and add any of these songs into existing playlists of yours or create your own playlist. 
Just click those three dots on the right and you can immediately add it to any playlist or create a new one right there, super easily. As you scroll a little farther down, you're gonna find something called stations. And they've got stations that are customized just for you based on what you're listening to. What's the difference between a playlist and a station? Well, a playlist is finite. It may have lots and lots and lots of songs in it, but eventually it ends. But a station is infinite. They can be based on an album, an artist, a song, or a genre. It's kind of like what Pandora does. You pick a song or an artist that you like, and they play music like that. So if you create a Rolling Stones bass station or a Glass Animals bass station, it will play music by Glass Animals and other similar artists. For the most part, stations are created using artificial intelligence, but the playlists are generally curated and created by actual human beings. So they're kind of cool because they're made by hand. So now let's head over to the Browse section. The Browse section is where Apple shows you what's new and popular. You'll find some of their top playlists, as well as seasonal or specific playlists. You'll also find playlists for new music, as well as a whole new section called Just Ask Siri with customized playlists for specific actions like hanging out or winding down or music for fall. Let's take a look at what's in their fall music. We can see here there's some Badly Drawn Boy, some Etta James, Leonard Cohn, Nico. This might be perfect to play in the background during a Thanksgiving or a Christmas dinner. That's the purpose of the Browse section, and it's pretty cool that you can do that, but it's not my favorite part. My favorite part is to come all the way down here where you can pick a playlist based on mood. As you can see here, there's fitness, focus, wellness, and chill. Let's see what kind of playlists they've got in the focus section. And you'll see all these different playlists, all these different artists meant for focusing. So sometimes when I need to work and get something accomplished, I'll put on one of these focus playlists and I'll step right into the zone and get a ton of things done. And if you continue to scroll, you'll find charts based on the best songs in the city or the global best songs, United Kingdom songs. And you can just keep on looking. You're gonna find all sorts of cool stuff down there. If you go down to the bottom, you're gonna find this cool section where you can explore by category, by the top of the charts, by essential playlists. It's a great way to find a playlist that's perfect for you without having to create it yourself. Let's take a look at what happens when we browse by category. All of a sudden, we're greeted by particular decades or particular kinds of music. It's super easy to come in here and find playlists specifically for music of the 2000s. Different playlists, different artists, different videos, even hits by decade or hits by year. Super easy way to explore a decade that you already know or that you wanna hear more of. Which brings us to the most misunderstood and worst named section of Apple Music, radio. You see, when Apple bought Beats, they incorporated it into Apple Music and at the time, Beats had a live radio station called Beats One. So they added that into Apple Music. Then, in addition to adding the live radio, they also added local and internet stations. You can get your NPR fix, or you can check out the BBC Radio or 1FM 91.3. That's cool and all, but hidden deep inside the radio section is the part that I'm most impressed by the ability to create your own Pandora-like stations. A station is a computer-generated endless playlist based on a song, album, artist, or genre. Like a station based on Jason Mraz or one based on holiday music. Let's go create one really quickly here. I'm going to go into my artist section down in the library here. I'm gonna grab Alec Benjamin. And right here, as I click on the list of Alec Benjamin songs that I've got, in the upper right corner, I can click those three dots and I can create an Alec Benjamin station, which is super easy to do. And it's a great way to discover music that's like somebody that you already like. But the problem is, where do you find it once you've played it? And the answer, oddly, is under radio. If you come into the radio section, up at the top here, under recently played, that's where you're gonna find your created radio stations. There's my Alec Benjamin one right there. So I can come right back to it if I want to listen to it later. And I can also come to some of the other stations that I've created in the past just by coming into this area, searching for the ones I like, clicking on it, and it starts playing. 
And then the final part of the radio section, which again is just an overly packed, confused section, happens down at the bottom. As you scroll down, you're going to come across the section here where you get all the stations by genre. This is another really helpful way to do things. You can find it in the browse section, but this is where I more commonly go. So you can find the stations by genre or worldwide stations, etc. If you come down to the bottom, you can go from any one of these different areas to find things that you love. So if I want to find alternative and indie playlists, this is where I'm going to go. And here you can find all of these separate stations automatically made for you, which is awesome because it makes it so easy to just start listening to something. So those are the separate Apple Music sections. Listen now, browse, and radio. But that still doesn't explain how to really get the most out of your Apple Music subscription. When someone first comes over to Apple Music, they always feel a little overwhelmed. And they ask me, how am I supposed to use it? How am I supposed to find stuff? And how am I supposed to play what I want? And here is where Apple Music is far superior to Spotify. Siri. If you want to hear a specific artist or album, you can just ask Siri to play it for you. Siri, play the Beatles. Or Siri, play Heat Waves by Glass Animals. Or Siri, play the album Nevermind by Nirvana. And Siri will be happy to oblige. You can trigger Siri from your computer by using the key code command plus space or by clicking on the Siri in either your menu bar or your dock. You can also use your phone or iPad to do the same thing. You see, your Apple Music library should be synchronized across all of your devices. And if you've got one of Apple's HomePods, which is a standalone speaker, you can use that as well. You can even ask Siri to create a station for you, simply by saying, Siri, create a station based on Elvis Presley. Create a station based on Adele, and it'll do it. Or you can say, Siri, play my chill out playlist or any of the playlists you've created. You can even ask her to play a specific kind of music or genre, such as Siri, play music to study to, or play something romantic, or play the greatest hits of the Eagles. Here are some of my favorites. Play this album. Play this artist. Skip this song. Play more like this. Turn this up. Play the previous song. Play my whatever it's called playlist. Add this to my whatever it's called playlist. Play Christmas music. Shuffle my whatever it's called playlist. Add this to my library. Who sings this song? Play some music I can dance to. Create a station based on a particular artist, an album, or a genre. And there's so much more you're just going to have to experiment to figure it all out. If you don't want to use Siri, you can go in through your library for songs you've already added. Or play around in the Listen Now, Browse, and Radio sections to start the music. Don't forget to keep your eye open for those three dots because whether you find them in a playlist like this or next to a specific song like this or even above a particular artist, it can help you to download their music so you can play it when you're offline, add it into a specific playlist, or create a station from it. And one of the best tips for Apple Music is if you find a song that you love, just love, or an artist that you really enjoy, click on those three dots and let Siri and Apple know that you like it. So I can come right here and I can tell Siri I love this song. And then it will suggest more like this in the future. So that's the basics of Apple Music. There's some other stuff that we'll dig into in future videos. I'm going to show you how to get around Apple Music directly from the phone. But your homework for now is to get into your Apple Music account and start exploring, start downloading, stop worrying about how much it might cost to listen to that song or that album or explore that particular artist. Start listening to music again freely and avidly. So that's what I've got for today's lesson. What are your favorite features of Apple Music? Do you prefer Spotify? And if so, why? And if you got great value and information out of today's video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already a subscriber. Once again, I'm Dylan Stewart, the Mac Whisperer, and it's my passion and profession to help you get more done in less time and with less effort on all your Apple devices than you ever thought possible. Now I'm going to go put on my headphones and check out some of these updated playlists. I'll catch you next time.